favorite stories in the Bible is found in Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. And it's a story about Zacchaeus. And uh, I just uh, love that story. It's one of my favorite stories um, about Jesus in the Bible. And uh, I would like to share that with you today and just give some thoughts how I feel about uh, some revelation that the Lord has laid on my heart about this story. Uh, so starting in chapter 19 of Luke, verse 1, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. I want to stop right there. Um, the very fact that he wanted to see who Jesus was, in other versions it actually says he sought or was seeking to see who Jesus was. I just think that's really amazing. Uh, you know, you have to I stop and think and when I'm reading this story about why would a man who is wealthy and a tax collector has it all, uh, why would this man even want to uh, seek after Jesus? But it just seems to me like that this man, you know, it says that he was very short in stature, uh, so short that he couldn't see through the crowd. And uh, he had to run ahead of the crowd, run ahead of Jesus and find a tree, a sycamore fig tree to climb up and get a view of Jesus. And so uh, I believe that this man Zacchaeus, a lot like a lot of us, you know, in this world today, you know, times have changed, but people haven't really changed, you know. Uh, people, um, they try to live a life without God, and they go about trying to find who they are. Uh, there's this empty vacuum inside of them, and they just want to be accepted. They want to be approved of by other people. So uh, you can imagine this man, Zacchaeus, you know, he was a little man. He was a short man. He was probably born that way, you know, and um, uh, probably made fun of. You know, his family may not have accepted him. His mother and father was like, you know, why couldn't he, Zacchaeus, why couldn't you have been a tall man like King Saul in the Old Testament? You know, um, maybe he was the bunt of all jokes, you know, growing up, going to school there in Israel. And uh, maybe people were mean to him. You know, and so and maybe people actually rejected him a whole lot and made fun of him, and he was probably very hurt. You know, so uh, yeah, I think that you know he got this occupation as a tax collector because think about it to get noticed. He wanted people. He's like, if you if you don't see me, you don't look down, you don't look at me, you bump into me, maybe you knock me on the ground. I'm gonna make you notice me. I'm gonna become not just a tax collector, but I'm going to become the chief tax collector. I'm going to come up to your homes, knock on your door, and demand the money, and I'm going to get rich, and, and I'll, I will be famous and popular by my own doing. I'll make it happen. I will make you, make you, even if you don't like me, I'll make you notice me. And so I think that's what happened with this man. I just think that, you know, um, he could very possibly have been trying to climb the corporate ladder, so to speak, and stepping on as many people as he could to have a position in life, to uh, have an identity, but it was a false identity. It wasn't really who he was. It wasn't who God made him to be. And then, you know, uh, Jesus comes walking through Jericho, where he's staying at. And uh, Jesus is walking through, and there's all these people, thousands of people. You know, there's no Bible movie that can really justify, you know, when you go see a Bible movie, um, one of my favorites is Jesus of Nazareth from 1977. I was 11 years old when it came on TV. And when I saw it for the first time, I thought it was an awesome movie. I mean, it had some things that were kind of off, but um, I just really enjoyed the movie a lot. I thought Robert Powell did an excellent job, and um, they had a lot of popular stars in there, Ernest Borgnine, um, uh, among others, and I just thought it was a very good movie. Some people like The Passion of the Christ, um, you know, other movies about Jesus, uh, The Greatest Story Ever Told, which is really old. And there's all these movies, but if you ever notice when you watch them, there's not a whole lot of extras. It's like they don't really justify what the Bible says. Nobody can hire enough actors or a extras to play those parts, and it probably isn't a big enough wide-angle screen to show how many people were actually flocking around Jesus. So there was a lot of people... And it says that Zacchaeus was so short in stature, you know, um, he could not see over the crowd. This was a hurdle to him. But I love it that this man was determined that, you know, he, amongst the, all these hurdles, that he sought to see Jesus, you know, more than these other people. He had a heart and a passion. 
He wanted to know who Jesus was. He wanted to know, get a look at this man to see why so many people liked him and so many people, thousands of people came on from all over Israel to come see this man. He wanted to know just what this man had. And honestly, he desired in his heart to know who he was. He wanted to really know who Jesus was. He wanted to be like that person. All his life, he wanted people to like him, to love him. You know, but they didn't do that. So um, you, you can just see the scene here. I mean, he's like, he, he sees that he cannot get a picture, picture or view of Jesus. He's, he's struggling, and there's all these people. He can't push his way through. He's a small man. So he runs way, he sees a tree, a sycamore fig tree, and he runs way ahead, and he has a plan. And he runs way ahead of the crowd, gets up in that tree, sees that Jesus is coming that way, is going that route. And uh, I think it's really awesome, you know, um, that this is a very powerful moment. When Jesus reached the spot, I'm going to get a little bit ahead of myself. So he ran ahead and climbed the sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Now this is like a powerful word of knowledge. I mean, this man did not know Jesus. He sought to know Jesus, who he was. So Jesus didn't know him either. But God knew him, you know, and Jesus is hearing from the Father. He's hearing God's voice. And so in the Spirit, Jesus does a word of knowledge, word of, scar, excuse me, word of knowledge. And he says, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He is gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. You know, um, that's how the world is, you know, and sometimes even some people in a church, if they're carnal, you know, they can look at you and judge you, you know, but Jesus doesn't judge. You know, he his heart is after people getting saved he wants to show you who you are who your identity is and there's always going to be people there's always going to be critics you know and they're not only judging jesus but they're judging zacchaeus you know they're calling him a guest of a sinner you know and um and zacchaeus heard this too as well as jesus but look what zacchaeus says you know i mean this this is very powerful jesus said to him come down immediately i must stay at your house today and he wasn't talking about his physical house, although he was, but he was really talking about his heart. You know, in uh, Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, we will turn there. Jesus says to John in Revelation 3, 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. And Jesus wasn't just saying to Zacchaeus, I want to go to your physical house, but he wanted to come inside this house. He wanted to come inside of Zacchaeus' heart. And Zacchaeus was so happy, he welcomed Jesus in. And there was a major transformation that took place. There was a major repentance that took place in Zacchaeus. Remember, Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And look what Zacchaeus says to Jesus. But Zacchaeus stood up amongst in the midst of all his naysayers, in the midst of all his judges, in the midst of all the Pharisees, the scribes, the hypocrites, the people putting him down, he says, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. That's amazing. I mean, that's, that's salvation. That is like a total turnaround of heart and stature. I mean, he was, he was yeah, I mean... His stature was small, but spiritually he was tall. Amen. You know, so I mean, God really did a work on this man, and, and Jesus was blown away. You know, I mean, Jesus says to him, Today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to say, seek and to save the lost. So, you know, Jesus is declaring in front of all of them, You're calling him this. You know, you're saying he's a sinner. You're saying he's a, a publican. I'm saying he's a son of Abraham. 
that he is a son of Abraham. He's a child of God now. And that is, there's nobody like Jesus. I don't care what you say, there's nobody like Jesus. You know, he sees you for who you really are. He says, you know, that God the Father looks at all this. He looks at one sparrow that falls to the ground, and Jesus says, look, you're worth many, more than many sparrows. And so, you know, um, this is such a beautiful story. It's very powerful, uh, the transformation that took place in Zacchaeus' life. And, um, you know, we need to be like that. You know, it's, it's you know, Jesus, the, the Spirit of Christ, you know, in Isaiah chapter 61, it says, this is the character of Jesus Christ, and this is the character we need to have today in our hearts and our lives. I'm tired of hearing about people kicking, you know, I heard this years ago when I got first got saved in 95, you know, there's uh, a couple people I worked with, They one of them went to the same church I went to, and I ain't going to name names, but, you know, uh, they got me a job with them uh, as a painter's helper, and um, when I drove with these two men, and, and they claimed to be Christians, you know, they were saying, um, oh, brother, you know, you got to kick, kick your brother when he's down. I was like, what? I was like, no, no, you don't kick your brother when he's down. You, you, you help him up. You lift him up. Like, no, 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 you got to kick your brother when, you're, when he's down. Give him a little kick to the curb. And I was like, you're kidding, right? And they were like, no. And they were very serious about it. I was, they also said to me that they never read the Bible. That I was like, what? I'm like, you're kidding, right? I was like, no. They, they said, we don't read the Bible. I was like, well, how do you get, how do you get the Word of God? And they're like, well, we just go to church every Sunday, and we hear the pastor preach. But I don't want to chase rabbits here and get off the subject, but you're not to kick your brother when he's down. And there's a lot of that going on today. And I'm here to say that's not Christ. It's not the character of God. You know, it, it's it's not about, you know, pointing a finger at somebody and saying, oh, that person's just easily offended all the time. Now, maybe they're broken hearted. You know, that's the people that Jesus loves. That's the people that Jesus is going after. That's the people that Jesus is wanting to save. And if we're supposed to be like Jesus, then we're supposed to have the same spirit that he has and the same character that he has. I'm going to read to you in Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1. This is the character that we are supposed to have, like Jesus has. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. See, he says, sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Let's stop calling people easy offended and judging them and saying, you got to be like me. No, you need to be like Jesus and you need to be a servant and you need to be humble servant like the foot washer when Jesus washed his disciples' feet. You know, when they were, why did Jesus do that? You know, why did Jesus wash his disciples' feet? Because he says, I'm showing you an example. You know, he was saying to them, because why? Because in two different times, in the four Gospels, in two different times, they were arguing about who would be the greatest among them, the disciples. Those 12 were arguing about who would be the greatest among them. And Jesus said, it's not like that in the kingdom of God. Kings have servants that wait on them, but not with you. But whoever's greatest among you shall be servant to the least. And we got this backwards. And I'm telling the church today, we need to turn this around because that's not the spirit of Christ. If you're about yourself, you know, that's not identity. Identity is to be like Jesus. Identity is to show love and compassion for people that are down, that they're broken hearted. That you go out there and you minister to the lost. That you go out there and you help these people. That you're there to love them. That's, you know, you're, that's, um, there's a saying, love, I'm hearing it lately. I didn't write this. I didn't say this. But I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just going to say it. I, I like it. Uh, love the hell out of people, meaning you're you're literally, if you see them throwing their way to hell, let's love them so much that we we show them that who Jesus is, that we can get that get that out of them, whatever spirit it is, whatever you know uh, is going on in their life. You know, let's love them and show them the love of Jesus, show them the character of Christ. You know, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty, liberty to the captives. That's freedom. How are you going to bring freedom? How are you going to heal the brokenhearted if you're kicking people to the curb or even your brother? You keep kicking your brother to the curb, you're going to kick him right out of the church. That's why people are leaving. You know, that's not what we want. You know, we want to be like Christ. We want to show the love of Jesus and compassion and love to them and bind them up. They're hurting. God expects us 
to be like the foot washer, the humble servant. That's why Jesus said that to them, because they argued two different times about who was, who was going to be the greatest among themselves. You know, it was like pride, you know. And Jesus said, it's not like that. And, he's, and when, he, when, he, when he took that bowl, you know, he took that basin of water. He took off his robe, his garment that identified who he was to them. You know, everybody, he, he wore costly garments, you know. And, I mean, um, everybody could point out where Jesus was walking. You know, he had these beautiful garments on. So, you know, he took them all off. He stripped himself off of those. And he wrapped a towel around himself. And he took a basin of water. And he starts washing his disciples' feet. He gets down on his knees. And Peter was overwhelmed. He's like, what are you doing, Lord? You know, you should not wash my feet. And Jesus said, if you don't let me wash my, your feet, you have no part with me. And, and Peter says, not only my feet, but my head also. But Jesus says, no, only your feet need to be washed. And I'm, I'm going to say to you, he says, I'm, what you don't understand, Jesus said to him, you don't understand, but I'm showing you an example. And if the Son of Man, who is worshipped by angels, is washing your feet, how much more shall you do that? To those out there, the minister, and I'm, I can't remember word for word, I don't have it in front of me right now. But I'm just saying to you, is that's the greatest example of ministry. That's true identity right there. That's when Jesus Christ humbled himself as the form of a foot washer. Even the towel, you know, he, he, he takes off his clothes, he's naked before him. And even a towel, he's wrapped it around himself. It's not to cover his nakedness. But he, as he washes his disciples' feet, he's using that towel as a tool of ministry to dry their feet with. So it's 100% ministry there. Do you understand what I'm saying? Give me an amen if you do. I just believe that that's the heart of God. He wants us to show Jesus, a loving Jesus, 100% perfect, pure love. You know, Apostle Paul said there's... Uh, which remains is, is faith, hope, and love, but above all, love. You know, in the First Corinthians chapter 13, chapter to love chapter, read that and study that. Get it inside of you. Love is not rude. Love is kind. Love, love is going out and just ministering to people and showing them Jesus Christ, showing them love without judging them from here. Turn this off and turn this on. Turn your spirit man on. Turn on the spirit of God within you. You know, let the Holy Spirit... Be the candle of the Lord, searching your inward parts in the belly where your spirit is. And let the Holy Spirit rule over your spirit. And let Him lead you and guide you how to minister to people. And don't be afraid. You know, it's not about you. It's about Jesus. And it's about winning souls. Jesus said, the greatest two commandments are this. Love the Lord your God, your God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. These two wrap up the law and the prophets. This is what God's heart is. This is God's heart now and always will be, and he wants us to win souls. So we're, we are to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. Listen, to comfort all that mourn. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness. Come on, trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. Amen. God is looking not just for us to be trees of righteousness. He's looking for people out there to be trees of righteousness. And that story I read from you, that simple story about Zacchaeus, it was just ten verses long. Study that. It shows the heart of Christ. How powerful is that, you know, that somebody was hated this little man that Jesus took notice of him, saw his heart, and he says, I must stay at your house today, Zacchaeus. But he's talking about this house here. Amen. Praise God. I love you all, and I just believe this is going to be an awesome year. Forgive me for stumbling on my words. <laughs> it happens sometimes with me. I probably didn't drink enough water. I'm going to do some now. But I believe 2018 is going to be a powerful year for you all. I believe the Spirit of God is going to come upon us heavily. 
And we're going to see souls won this year. I really believe it. We've been seeing healing, but I believe we're going to see a lot of souls won this year for the glory of God. I pray that this blesses you. I pray that this message, this grassroots message, will just permeate your being, your heart. I pray to God that, you know, everything I said today was pleasing to Him. I just pray, God, that, Father, that you just bless everybody that's watching us today. I pray, Father, that they'll hear your heart. That they'll hear the heart of the Spirit of God. That they'll hear your heart, Lord. That they'll walk the way Jesus walked. Each and every one of us that will do what God wants us to do and be pleasing in His sight. Amen. God bless y'all. I love y'all. Praise God. If you want to like this, share this, go right ahead. I thank you and praise God. Amen.